system engineers, so if they stay and try to uh, decap that forward HQ, they're, they're run off by it. And, uh, and then we have bars out for the Americans firing from house to house. For the most part, that's going to be kind of a losing proposition for the American player in I'd this say... case, especially since as soon as a, health get, a squad gets low, he can hop out and heal it, reinforce it if he needs to, and run from there. It seems like King is actually quite unsure what he should be doing. I mean, he went for those two M8s, they got obliterated right away, so they obviously, big losses, did not pay for themselves. Um, so he's quite unsure, he's gone for bars now, and um, I'm not exactly sure what he could be thinking, to be honest. He would be, I'm guessing he's just going to be going for heavy infantry to try and take out uh, any Panzer Elite, uh, Panzer Grenadier, should I say, and I'm guessing he's going to be holding out until long-term armor. Yeah, and we have uh, four-man squads up from the Panzer Leap. Uh, you know, both of these players at this point are effectively kind of preparing for, uh, for a very heavy infantry game because with the loss of the two M8s, I think what you're really seeing is uh, he's, he's abandoning light vehicles and shifting more towards an infantry-based game. It seems like it. Now, I suppose that's a, that's, I'd say that's a quite a good, uh, good idea, actually. Um, as long as he gets some maybe anti-tank out, like some um, an anti-tank gun, he should be fine to ho hold out until the late game, where he can get calliopes and bursting. Absolutely, and the the only other real option that you have at this point um, is to uh, bring an M3 half track out and bring that quad to bear. But it seems like the Panzer Elite are being very intensive on their infantry as well. I mean, we d we have uh, four uh, four man Panzer Elite squads now, um, but no tanks really, no uh, vehicles whatsoever. Right, and this is this is part of what Jim said, where he was trying an you know a non traditional strat, uh, not running to armored cars and not bringing out you know some of the more classically seen. Um, Units, you, you're getting a chance to kind of see some Shrek play, some Panzergrens being heavy on the field, um, you know, and and how that turns out. Uh, you know, I would imagine with the almost six manpower now and the ability to unlock Hetzers, we're going to see a Hetzer come out on the field. So he's going to be bringing it out in Hetzer. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, it could be an option. Um, I think that and he does. I think all noobs are here. Okay, he's bringing out an Hetzer, and that'll be well. The Hetzer, I don't think they're actually very. They're not good against infantry whatsoever. I don't think so. Um, they're given their rotation uh, that they have to rotate their full body. They're quite a limited tank. I mean, they're they're good against armor, but apart from anything else, not really. Well, and they do have, you know, some in the way of their gun isn't horrible against infantry, but of course it's nothing like the, you know, the blast radius, or even the Sherman. Oh, it no, tends it's nothing to pick like a, off a person at a time. A person at a time, that's right. As opposed to, a, you know, a Pershing out on the field that can, you know, fire and take out practically a whole squad. So King has actually responded to this by this Hetzer by building his one anti-tank gun. Um, I'm sure it all will be okay. He's upgrading for sticky bombs as well. So just absolutely making sure one anti-tank gun alone might be um, not enough to take out a Hetzer. But now that he's got sticky bombs, he can easily, you know, take one out. No problem. No, and uh, you know, with the uh, with the all faction cast that we did, we saw a Hetzer take out an M8. Uh, an anti-tank gun and take three stickies in the process just because of the 5% bug. <laughs> that wasn't, yeah, that was uh, quite a strange replay. <laughs> that was one lucky Hetzer. Now this Hetzer taking a lot of damage, even from the front armor, wow. I'm quite surprised from the front armor, very bi uh, big penetration and down to just a slither of health, really. Did he activate, um... Armor piercing rounds for that? I couldn't tell by the sound. That's actually a good question. It might have been possible. Um, given, actually, I would think so because given um, King's um, munitions right now, he's floating quite a lot. He's throw floating 375 ammunition, so it's quite likely, actually. 
Yeah, and that's that's one of the you know one of the aspects of the of the Hetzers in general in general is that penetration from the front is a little bit lower than what you would see from other tanks. And uh, of course, we get a curveball out of the Hetzer taking out a rifleman. <laughs> Hence, we actually have these uh, Gwers doing a pretty good job at slowing down the riflemen. Um, obviously, just afraid that they might retreat or anything like that. But it kind this... of an interesting move on those uh, G43s walking through the blob and not dying. That is quite interesting as indeed. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Maybe he's just not focusing on them, I'm not sure. It could also be because of that healing involved with the forward HQ. <laughs> Three grenades Ooh. going off. King is really <laughs> does not care about his ammunition right now. I mean, he has so much floating at the moment, 269. Three grenades, no problem. So huge casualties for King right now. I mean, he lost a, a rifleman squad there. I believe he might have lost the uh, engineers as well. Um, just losing this anti-tank gun as well. I'd like to see, I'd like to see all noobs here take it. Or in fact, it looks like he's actually going to attack ground and destroy it. Losing ground out there. Well, there's nothing wrong with destroying the AT gun while it's there. Uh, you know, while you've already got four-man squads. If he doesn't uh, need it, then why know, not? The Hetzer is enough, right? Right, but you're also, you know, at this point in the game, you're 18 minutes in, you haven't seen Airborne, you haven't seen Rangers, you haven't seen any kind of, uh, you know, uh, infantry laid mines, so, you know, at this point, you kind of have to suspect that he's gone uh, armor from a Panzer Elite player's perspective. That's right, so then again, just denying that um, anti-tank. Maybe that anti-tank would be good for that late game armor, but then again, that might be still quite a bit off. Still uh, quite far away. Uh, certainly, and especially with some of the losses that the American player's taken, he's lost at least two rifle squads in the process. And uh, so, uh, you know, with that, you uh, it's kind of a balanced decision there because he's not going to have, a, you know, a huge infantry force necessarily due to the losses that he's taken. Um, to kind of come back and take that AT gun back from you. He may be able to get it, but uh, you know, it's it's kind of a balance. Regardless, destroying an AT gun almost never a bad decision. <laughs> it's not definitely is. Um I think he's just not worried. I think King's just not worried about anti tank right now because he has those sticky bombs and he's got plenty of ammunition right now. Um but really the right hand side where that anti-tank gun was destroyed. That's quite a front right now. I mean, it's going to be quite hard to even break that apart. So I think what King is doing right now by focusing his guys on the left-hand side is actually the correct correct response. By at least trying to take over the left-hand side and playing on an open field, that uh, probably gives him a better chance. Yeah, it does. And and I think uh, the when you when you look at it right now, you get a second Hetzer out on the field. You've got. Uh, Two rifles and a flame engineer. Two flame engineer two and a yeah. fresh rifle squad coming out of the coming out of the racks for him. Um, you know, again, it, it kind of comes back to that. Uh, you know, switching over to an infantry heavy strat due to the the Shreks on the field. Um, you see Sticky's going out on the Hetzer now. What I think I'd like to see a bit more is uh, a bit more anti-infantry. Um, these these Panzer Grenadiers could definitely build, uh, you know, get some MP44s on them. Well, even the uh, the one squad that has uh, has picked up a bar, oh, wow. um, it uh, it could actually upgrade to G43s still and and have the ability to uh, you know kind of in combination be used in G43s and a bar. I would say that was quite heavy, heavy losses for the um, Panzer Elite right there. I mean, the Panzer Elite lost a whole bunch of men. They lost a Hetzer. Um, it actually looked like the Americans were going to push him back, but the uh, but the PE falling back on a, a new uh, whole bunch of <laughs> two squads that are moving up. Now, quite big losses for Panzer Elite there, but I think just given the fact that the Americans lost so much earlier in the game consistently, that um, allowed the Panzer Elite to just bring it in a little bit more and just keep yeah. the um, Americans off for a little bit longer. 
Well, and in the process, so that American get a bet three rifle squad, and, and you know, with oh, Shrek's on the on the field, you have to be very careful to make sure that they don't end up with a Shrek, because that one squad can do just damage. an enormous amount of damage. Yeah, and just a quick comment on veterancy. If you look at what uh, Jim's doing, he's only got one of the Panzer Grenadier squads uh, with defensive vet. All of it is offensive vet. Shrek's, um, you know, a lot of people tend to go a little more offensive vet just for accuracy. Um, but with G43s putting offensive vet on them, you're seeing a, a large increase in their anti-infantry capability. And that's what he's focusing on, because he obviously realizes that there's so many riflemen on the field, what he could really use right now is just some more killing power. Yeah, and especially since he he has the infantry advantage due to the down squads of the AmeriClayer, um, you, uh, you really want to make sure to try and make sure that if he comes back out with some more infantry that you're, you're turning them down and away as quickly as you possibly can. Supply lines are broken. We have territory cut off from supply. Now, I, we actually see that there's uh, one of the good benefits about the tank hunter doctrine is just the fact that you get two Panzer Shreks. I mean, there's so much anti-tank on the field right now. Um, old noobs are here. Just definitely does not have to really worry about tanks. Um, he obviously realizes that the armor doctrine is going to come out, but there's no heavy tanks in at the moment. Um, so what he really needs is some anti-infantry. He, he, he lost one Panzer Shrek squad at some point here, though, because he did have two. Uh, or no, there's he's got, the second Yeah, one. he's got two. <laughs> um, uh, but with, uh, you know, left-hand side uh, tank hunters or is uh, definitely one of the one of the doctrine choices where you get double Shreks. You sacrifice, it's just like putting two Shreks on a Grenadier squad. You sacrifice a little anti-infantry, you gain some anti-tank. That's right, and you got to compensate by making more um, Panzer Grenadiers. Now at this point, I think uh, the... PE player is seeding kind of the west side of the map and deciding that he's going to set up over on the right hand side. Um, with expecting an, a, you know, an armor company, I would be a little wary of doing that, but it looks like he's getting ready to set up a fairly decent flank here as well. Seems like it. Now, Ryan, just quickly, I just wanted to check, what time are you on? I am at 24.43.4.5.6.7. Okay, I'll speed up a little tiny bit. There we go. Ooh, and uh, Vet 3 Rifle Squad going down to the Hetzer's machine gun. <laughs> Quite unlucky. Have you ever spent any time looking at the Hetzer? Do you notice that it's probably the only automated machine gun in all of Company of Heroes? It moves on its own, it doesn't have a guy. That is quite a strange looking thing, yeah, if, I, if, you, <laughs> if I mention right now. Is there meant to be a guy up there? We're losing ground out there. I don't even see a hatch in the design. Yeah, I know, that's quite a very strange thing. Um, I guess they had some sort of, like, AI back then. <laughs> some guy with a little wheel down in the hatch. The invisible soldier. Oh yeah, it might be that. It might be like a submarine. <laughs> now, of course, with the loss of that Vet3 rifle squad, that's uh, that's definitely a big blow. Uh, you know, you're you're losing the 50% increased damage that comes out of that squad, and when you're going infantry for infantry here, that's kind of risky. Now, um, I was just going to mention that uh, HQ King, he's actually floating a lot of manpower right now. He's got eight, nine hundred manpower. He's got four a CP, almost at five. So what he's really been doing is just holding out for these late game tanks. So we'll definitely be seeing them very soon. And in fact, he's just gone to five CP and here we go. We have a Pershing coming out on the field. So could this be trouble? Well, absolutely. You know, except for the fact that you've got two double Shrek squads, even then a Pershing can be trouble for that. You've got an immobilized Hetzer right now. Um, and the Pershing's coming uh, right for it. Just as a note, if you look at the kills on that Hetzer, it has 14 infantry kills. So I know you were saying that they're not great against infantry, but as I said before, it, you know, they definitely do 